Good morning, good morning, grace and peace, church family. Happy Easter people. How are you wonderfully doing today? It's so good to be back in the house of the Lord after such a wonderful time of celebrating Easter. We're now gathered again to rejoice and bless our God. Welcome to worship here at First Church. We are grateful for those that are in sanctuary and for those of you in our virtual church. We believe that the Lord has something for you to expect this day and your life will fully be blessed. I believe when the scripture says, let us go into the house of the Lord and to bless his holy name. So we are coming to do just that, amen? amen. So as we lift our voices and prayers, I pray that something that's done said will bless your soul and inspire you to keep worshiping and living for God. As we enter into this time of worship, we invite you to hear our musical preludes without seeing you. Then we will join together in that great song, Easter people, raise your voices. Welcome to worship. Amen, amen, amen. Please rise as you're able and join us in our opening hymn, Easter People Raise Your Voices, that great hymn of the church, amen? amen.
Sister Angie and I as we share in our call to worship. God of hope, we come into your presence this morning with confidence that you will meet us here. Mm. Where there is sadness, many bring joy. Where there is tiredness, many bring refreshment. Where there's despair, many bring new sense of hope. Let this place be a sanctuary, a safe heaven for us. A home for holy words and songs and prayers as we as devote we ourselves to you. We pray, pray this in, in Jesus' name. name. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of our God. Invocation. Eternal God, you are a rock. You are in the firm foundation for everything we built. You give gifts to your people for the good of the church. You equip and train your people to carry out the good works for you. Prepare us today, Lord, in advance. As we meet today, we ask that you would provide wisdom, guidance, and directions. Remind us that you are a loving Pally. You are all our fortress. You are a tower of strength, and you are a rescuer. Everything we need is found in you. To Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May you join us in the Lord's prayer. Oh, Our Father, who art in heaven, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and power and the glory, as it is done in heaven. Give us this day as we give, and forgive those who trespass against us. As lead us not into temptation, against us. Lead us not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever, forever and ever. Amen. And now we hear her dear pastor with rule and serve. Amen. Amen. If there's any little ones, they can go to Sunday school. And for those, the big ones, you could stay here. This is your Sunday school, in essence. There are a number of ways that you are invited to grow and serve in the Lord, especially during this Easter tide. There's new things for us to participate in. But one of the things that we're ever grateful for is that when we come together in the house of God and worship, we just ask that we continue to help each other stay safe. And so as you are able and willing, we really appreciate it that if you wear your mask, and that she will sign in to let us know that you're here. Sanitize your hands for your safety and our safety. Honor one another in social distancing and when you're going through the doors. It just helps us continue to be healthy and safe community as we worship the Lord. And as you know, we have been trying to provide a wonderful enriching time for our young people to grow their minds and their spirits. So every Sunday we offer this awesome Bible study opportunity. So if you have any young people, please send them because we know that they need to know the Lord. Amen? Amen. Our men, hallelujah, our United Methodist men are very active. In fact, today after service, there's a meeting for all men. So men, will you please, please, please make sure you meet Dr. Al. Dr. Al, where are y'all meeting? Wherever you find space, so find Dr. Al and have a good time. And if you are in our virtual church, men, you still have time to get here to join Dr. Al and the men. Every Tuesday, we continue to bless God's people in the community by offering this program called TIPS. And now we're starting a new part called Tips at Home. So if you know anyone that really could benefit from having the self-monitoring at home, just let us know. All they have to do is be 60 years and older and live in our Westchester community. And I can't say it enough, we all know that prayer changes things, yes? Amen. I know many of us are here because of someone's prayers, and we are the answered prayers of many. And so let us keep praying. So join us. We expect the numbers this year to increase in our Tuesday night prayer group and our Wednesday morning prayer group. On Tuesday night at 7 p.m., and you can call the number 716-427-1128, enter the access code 614-420, and you can join Sister Susan, Sister Angie, and all those amazing souls that are praying 
every Tuesday night. Or you can meet Sister Gloria and that wonderful crew of saints that like to rise with the sun at 6 a.m. All you got to do is call at 267-807-9601-998542. And again, I promise you, as you go into today, your soul will be blessed. On Wednesdays, we have BB Joy. It's our wonderful senior older adult ministry, and they meet faithfully every Wednesday at 11 a.m. So if you are 65 and older, you're welcome to join. Tips is 60. BB Joy, they want you to be just a little bit older. And so at 65, you can join them. I, they have a different Zoom meeting, and their passcode is definitely different, so just make sure you look in your bulletin. You could also call them by phone. We will resume our Wednesday night fellowship. It will officially be in May. Pastor has two more things that she has to do on a Wednesday night for the district in the conference level, and then I'll be back with you. So I look forward to our Bible study. It's always a filling time for our souls. And one of the things that we appreciate is we have the ability to feed God's people every other Tuesday. Every other Tuesday, the next distribution is Tuesday, April 25th. We offer a food pantry bag. And let me tell you, the numbers are increasing. We had a funeral this Thursday, and some people weren't sure if they were coming to the church or going to get the food pantry. The two lines met. And so know that every contribution you make financially to this ministry is definitely seed going into fertile soil and blessing God's people. Absolutely. Please do. <laughs> Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. So every year here at First Church, we have what we call a pre-Mother's Day dinner and a candlelight service for all mothers, those that are past, grandmothers, aunties. We pray and we ask God and we light a candle for them. And also we have a dinner after. And it's usually a very fun time for us to get together as both mothers and men are invited as well. So this year, it will be on the 29th of April, a couple of Saturdays from now. We have not been getting good reception, so we, today we want to make a determination because we've got to prepare to um, get whatever meal and have everything ready for that day. So today I'm asking that if you are interested, if you want to be, if you would like to attend, it's not costly, it's only $25 for adults, and a little less than that for our, our young ones. So please see myself and Myra Dixon. We've got flyers. You could hand them out to your friends or family members. And come, let's get together for pre-Mother's Day dinner. Again, we are looking for a head count today or tomorrow. If you have made up your mind today and you want to think about it, you can call the church number, which is 914-668-3334 our assistant is usually here on a Tuesday through to Thursday. She'll take the message and she'll pass it on to myself or Myra, and we'll be able to plan accordingly. Thank you very much. There's also another flyer which I want to bring to your attention. It's a fundraising for a search. It's all about fundraising. We need to come together as a family and be able to raise funds so we can maintain what we need to maintain here at First Church. Everything that we do is what you give us. So I'm asking, there's a trip that we have, we're sponsoring as a finance committee along with the um, United Women of Faith. It's a trip to Washington, D.C. to the National African American Heritage and Cultural Museum. I have never been there, and I want to go. I really want to go. But if we don't have enough people, the minimum, Ms. Dixon said, is 25 to 30 people. We have to have at least 30 people to, so that we can make the trip. If you are interested, it's only $180 for adults and $150 for children. It's a great time. We get together, we go to the museum, we have um, lunch, we have together, it's a little fellowship. We get a chance to chat with each other and to see something that we have never seen before. So for those of you who have never gone, those of you who have gone, yes, you can come and go again. It's a fun trip. It's where you'll see all sorts of different, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm re I really want to go. So come on, folks, let's get together, <laughs> make this trip. Put your name down, see Sister Mara or myself, or again, call the, the um, church office number and let Terry know. So we want to make this trip a joyous time 
If you're not going, then the trip will be canceled. So please, we're asking for your support. Those of us who are on Zoom, you were invited as well. Call the church or call Myra. You know, everyone knows Myra. So please let us know um, if you would like to go. Again, it's only $180, $180, folks, for an entire day. The coach will be here at 6.30. He will pick you up. You, have, you will be sitting in a luxury coach. You will get to Washington, D.C. You, you will get a chance to see the, the, all the exhibits in the museum. If not all, then we have another trip again, okay? So, so please let us know if you are interested. And thank you so much, Rev. I appreciate it. Thank you for a search. Amen. Amen. I pray that you have heard the invitation from Sister Susan. Both of those are amazing things. And so I believe everyone came to this earth because of a mother, yes? No, you're not sure? I'm pretty sure someone birthed you to allow you to be here. And so it's an opportunity to honor those that have given you life and those that are still present in your life. And so hopefully everyone will come to that opportunity. And I have been to the African Heritage Museum and it's phenomenal. And you really can't see it all. It has everything about the culture. And it's during that weekend of Juneteenth. And so I really hope that you bring your friends. I'm bringing one of mine all the way from Connecticut, and I'm trying to get a couple of others to come and join me. So, June, please. You forgot to do the city huh? You forgot to say what date it was. Oh, June 17th. 17th. Yes, June 17th. So, the other thing I want to share with you all is every quarter I try to have what's called the town hall meeting. And so, our next one is April 30th. And it's the time for us to have what I call holy conversation about our church and the things that are going on. So I invite you to please join us on April 30th. We will provide some food for you to eat as we talk and fellowship together. Also, make sure you save the date. October 27th is our gala at Giuliano's. And we want 90 people. If we get more than 90 people, we got to get a bigger room. So right now, we want you to just save the date. What date? If you said those words, I expect you on the sign-up list. Amen? <laughs> there is also one of the ways that we are connected is to YCOP, and they're having their annual pancake breakfast. And so they invite us to support. It's $25 for adults, $10 for children under 12, $5 for children under 5. So please see our newsletter. YCOP does a wonderful outreach to our youth. There are many, many youth. They're taking in youth from everywhere, even those right now that are coming in from other places. And so please help them. Also, we have a number of people who are part of the All Islands Association, and they are having their 49th scholarship, annual scholarship luncheon on Sunday, May 7th at the Green Tree Country Club. So please see Sister Nelda. Oh no, know that our Sister Nelda's, <gasps> Sister Nelda's being honored. Hallelujah. Bless you, Sister Nelda. Wave your hand for the camera. Amen. Awesome, awesome. She's one of the honorees, so we're grateful to God. Let's go support her and all islands. And want to say happy, happy birthday. But before I do that, for those of you that came to serve for Reverend Gloria's husband's funeral, I just want to say thank you. This sanctuary was overflowing. Every seat in here was filled. All the ropes were down. People were lining the walls and they gave testimony to an amazing life. And for those of you that said that you would help be ushers, I thank you for those that became ushers on the spot. I bless God for you. They said we were the church with the hostess with the mostest. And so for that, I thank you. That's part of our good reputation. I also wanna take a moment of personal privilege for any way, for any of those that helped make our Lenten and our Holy Week amazing. Whether you served behind the scenes or in front, thank you so much for offering your life to God. In our cooperative parish, many people are talking about how awesome our Monday, Thursday service was. Yeah. And many people have been celebrating and speaking about how awesome Palm Sunday as well as Easter was and our Lenten study. And so none of that happened alone. And so thank you for being a part of that. Amen. And I pray if you participated, you were blessed. 
So today we say, happy birthday, Sister happy Dorothy. Birthday. Happy, birthday. happy birthday. She is healing in the hospital, but she is still here. Hallelujah. Yeah. And prayerfully, just prayerfully, she may be coming out of ICU and entering home. So happy birthday, beloved, on this day. We also say happy birthday to Winsome Gregory and the Republic of Zimbabwe. Amen. Sister Angie? Yes, amen, amen, Lead amen, Lead us amen. in our next joyous time of worship, amen? <laughs> yes, 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 this is a, a fun time, this is a great time, and this is the best time. <laughs> so as we appeal for our tithes and offering, after that, after the professional offering, you will hear the choir sings, then this will be the blessing of the offering, and then the choir will sing again. So as we appeal for her, your financial um, giving, it's very important. You may give online through our website or you may mail your tithes and offering to the church. Deuteronomy 14, verses 22 to 23 says, You shall tithe all ye of your seed that comes from the field year by year. We have numbers of ways that you could give your tithes. You can mail or drop off your check at the church at 227 East Lincoln Avenue, Mount Vernon, New York. Or you could give online. Go to the FUMCMVNY.org, locate the online giving tab, read the entire list, then select the category to which you would like to donate your fund and donate. This is exciting. Give anywhere, mm -hmm. anytime, Get with the new Vatican Mobile app. You can use the, Van the Vanco mobile app by downloading the free Vanco app from the App Store or Google Play. From there, you can make a one-time donation or a set of recurring giving. Just select your fund and amount, enter payment method, and complete the donation. The professional, the professional offering, as the choir is saying, virtual church you can give. And just a thought, if you missed last week by giving, you can double up this week. We don't charge you for that. <laughs> As the, the choir sing, then the usher may come and proceed.
done for us. Yeah. It is so much that you have done for us that, Lord, Father God, as you blessed us this morning, yeah. and as you have blessed those that give into this basket, let this basket be overflow. Mm. Father, Lord God, you know what we do with this ministry. So, Father, as you extend this blessing, Lord God, and at you as it's reached into heaven, may you receive our tithes and offering in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The choir will sing again. Amen. And then the choir will illuminate. Let us all join in our song of praise. And so you're welcome to rise as you are able to help our choir and join our choir in singing. We are standing on holy ground. Yes. Praise God this morning from whom all blessings flow. This morning we thank God once again for the opportunity to listen, read, and hear the Holy Scriptures sent forth to us in the Old and New Testaments. Please join me in the prayer of illumination this morning. Living God, today's good news is so wondrous, so magnificent, that we struggle to wrap our heads around it. Give our hearts the wisdom to receive that which our heads cannot fully understand. Send your spirit to fill our whole bodies with your resurrection promise. This we pray in your holy and good name. Amen. This, old, this morning's Old Testament lesson comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 16, and it's taken from 
the new revised standard version entitled Song of Trust and Security in God, a Micam of David. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble ones in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. Yes. You hold my lot. Yes. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly her heritage. Mm -hmm. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. Yes. In the night also my heart instructs me. Mm -hmm. I keep the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand and I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. Yes. My body also rests secure. Yes. For you do not give me up to Sheol or let my faithful one see the pit. You show me the path of life. Yes. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word this morning. Amen. Our New Testament lesson comes from 1 Peter, first chapter, verses 3 through 9. Again, the New Standard, New Revised Standard Version. A living hope. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who is being protected by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now, for a little while, you have not had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith being more precious than gold that though perishable is tested by fire may be found to result in praise and glory and honor yes. when Jesus Christ is revealed. Yes. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Yes. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious day. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. These are the words of God for the children of God. Thanks be to God. We will now have a musical selection by our choir entitled My Tribute, followed by the sermon on ending expectation.
to God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Mm. Be the glory. Yes. To God. the glory for the awesome and amazing things you have done and we're grateful oh God you're not done doing great things for us and so now as we take a moment to meditate on what it means to have unending expectations oh Lord we pray oh God that we remember to give you the glory and honor and praise as you continue to bless us in Jesus' sweet name amen I apologize in advance for not having a role, and I bless God for Sister Donna for a fan. <sighs> Unending expectations, and I want to add of hope. Something that is unending is perpetual, it's ceaseless, long-lasting, eternal, enduring, continuous, flourishing, nourishing, and living. An ending is defined as having or seeming to have no end in countless and continual. Mm -hmm. An ending. Mm -hmm. An expectation is an intention, a promise, confidence, trust, prospect of the possibility of something, an assurance down deep in your soul, and a reliance on hope. Expectation is defined as a strong belief that something will happen or will be the cause, be the case in the future, because it's a state of anticipation mm -hmm. and based on an assurance. In this Easter tide, we focus on Christ's resurrection, his ascension, and the sending of the Holy Spirit. We celebrate the good news that our Jesus Christ has died, has resurrected, and all of creation will continually be made new because of wonderful love and saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yes. Easter tide is a joyous time. It's a celebratory time. It's a time in the Christian year known as the Great 50 Days. It begins on Easter and ends at Pentecost. Yes. And for 50 days, the church is supposed to have a party. Yes. We're supposed to have a party and anticipate and actively live out this new birth that we have in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Yes. Looking forward to what God is going to do next. Somebody said next. Yes. We, beloved church family, are really on Easter tide, And I pray you understood what I said Easter tide was. Because mm. we're supposed to celebrate supposed to have joy and have unending expectations of hope of what God can or God will and should be in our lives. Yes. It's wonderful, and I do say wonderful, mm -hmm. in the midst of all of our celebrations of love and birthdays and promotions and upcoming graduations and new babies and new opportunities, we are in a new life, a new birth in season, beloved. Even in the midst of gun violence and racism and food disparities and loss of loved ones, health concerns and dangerous political and world alliances. Mm. Did you hear what China mm. and the others did? My God. Mm -hmm. But in the midst of all of that and even a denominational split, I promise you we are in a new life, new birthing season with the Lord. Amen. And even in the midst of all of this, I hope and suspect somewhere deep down in your soul 
that as you've journeyed through Easter and now are here today, that you have some unending hopes and expectations in your soul. Mm -hmm. I pray that you have something you're anticipating, yes. that you really, really want. I know I do. Mm. So I ask right now, beloved, what are you expecting? Anything? Are you expecting anything? Because mm, yes. this is a season of new life and new birth. Are you expecting anything? And if so, what exactly are you expecting? Because again, it's a season of new life and new birth. Yes. And I wonder if what you are expecting and what you are really looking for and anticipating, I wonder who are you expecting it from? And what's the foundation for that which you are expecting? How do you ground this expectation? And does this expectation, if it comes to pass, because it's supposed to, if it comes to pass, will it offer you something good? Does it demand anything of you? In our New Testament lesson today, Peter is writing to a church that is actually suffering. He's writing an inspiring letter to encourage them and to let them know to be encouraged that the hope that they have as believers, even though they are suffering, God is going to do something in their life. Amen. And First Church, although we are not suffering like them, we do have times and moments when we suffer in our soul, don't we? Yes. And so just like Peter had a word for them, Peter has a word for us. This message is gathered and filled with a whole bunch of troops that I pray that you will claim. But first of all, you need to know it's for all believers. Those who said, blessed be God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Those who know that the Lord is their chosen portion and their cup and holds my lot. Those who say, I believe in Jesus. He is my Savior, and I believe that he died and rose again. I believe that I have this Savior that gives me new life and new hope. As a believer, it entitles you to this. And you need to know as a believer, absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing you can do will allow you to earn this. You need to understand that it doesn't come from your own hand. It doesn't depend on whether or not you're super good all the time. No, no, no. This gift of unexpectation, un that's to be fulfilled, comes from none other than God himself. Hallelujah. However, we have to be clear. Whether you had a dramatic moment when you fell out and said, yes, I declare Jesus is my Lord and Savior and cried your heart out, or if along the way somehow you just made up in your mind, somewhere, somewhere you need to say and know for sure beyond the shadow of a doubt, Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God and that you died on a cross to rescue me from my sin and death to restore me to God the Father. And I choose now to turn and repent of my life, my self-centeredness, and every part of my life that does not please you, O oh Lord. I choose you. I give my life to you. I claim you as my Lord and Savior. Has everyone under the sound of my voice done that? Virtual church, I can't hear you, but I hope you type yes in the church. So since you are a believer, this gift is yours because first of the Lord's great mercy. Mercy is the undeserved kindness of God. Mercy is a gift that comes straight from the heart of God, our Father who's merciful and a merciful giver. Yes. This gift of mercy comes from God. It's so amazing that it's sure that all of us who have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God will not have to pay the cost of our sin. This merciful God gifts us with hope. When the songwriter writes, your grace and mercy brought me through, I'm living this moment because of you. I want to thank you and praise you too because your grace and mercy brought me through. This new life that we have because of his grace and his mercy is none other because Jesus died for us and the Lord was kind enough to love us so much that he gave him. And this gift, beloved, of mercy should make you humble. Mm -hmm. 
It should make you understand that you are living this day by the power and grace of God and that you are here not because just what you did on your own, but because mercy allowed you to be here. Yes, Peter reminds them that this gift is also theirs because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, you should know not everyone believes in the atonement theory or they actually have different understandings of the atonement. Some people don't believe that Jesus had to die on the cross, shed his blood to save our souls. Some don't believe that he actually went down in the grave and rose up again. But for those of us who do, we understand that because of Jesus' resurrection power and because he did all of that for you and I, we now have the ability to live like he lived. Because of what Jesus did, and when he said, I am the resurrection and the life, those who believe in me, even though they die, they will live, he has promised us that with resurrection power, we will be united with him yes. in death. And we certainly will be united with him in his resurrection. And because of that resurrection power, what that means is because Jesus lives, we all live. And it means that because Jesus made it through, we'll all make it through. It means that even though right now we don't have everything we need, Jesus still provides everything. And that death is not the end of our lives. And that the faith that we have in this Jesus, if we really hold on to it, if we live it, if we believe it, it will transform our lives and every dead thing in our life can actually come to an end. And everything that has life will actually be renewed. This Jesus who died and resurrected for us has given us the same resurrection power. And that, beloved, should be the foundation of your expectation and of your hope. And if you don't have that, then you can't have a living hope. Because we're living in time, beloved, where there are many things vying for your attention. Your time, your talents, your gifts, your service, and your witness. We're living in a time when the standards and other systems and other philosophies and mindset are trying to confuse people to seek after other things and expect their life to look like everyone else's life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And expecting joy and love and peace and righteousness out of things that can't really give it to them for long. We're living in a time when the center of people's expectations is not Jesus Christ our Lord. And my soul is concerned mm -hmm. for the church when that's not the church's expectation. Mm -hmm. That's why on this Sunday in Eastertide, I want to excite you and stir you, remind you, open your heart, remind you to seek and be determined that in the next 50 days between now and Pentecost, you're going to make sure that you're going to have your expectations on Jesus. Amen that you're going to expect God to bring new birth and new life in your life, yes. that you are going to do all in your power by the grace and mercy of God to live and to believe this thing called faith so that you can have the new birth and new life that he promises. Okay. Yes. Hope is the center of it all. When you say your hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness, I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on his name. Are you really doing that, beloved? My hope is that you are, because if you have the hope that the Bible promises, its fancy word is el peace, I think is how you say it, but notice that I say el peace because it has peace in it. And what it means, according to the Bible, is that it's a reasonable expectation looking forward to the future with assurance. The things that you're hoping for, are you sure they're going to happen? Do you believe what God promises for your life? In an article I just recently read, it says three things to re that three things remain. You know how that scripture says, love, love, joy, hope, peace, but of these things remains love. This writer decided to focus on peace. And this is what they say the gifts of those that have hope on. Sorry, they focus on hope, not peace, because Lord knows I need peace. The first thing they say is that hope is always future-minded 
and never seen yet. That this hope requires you to trust God with all that is in your mind, your heart, your soul, and strength, that you will trust and believe that God will do and that you will wait patiently for it and not make it happen on your own. That you will wait. Some of you all probably said, if she waits any longer, I'm going to be asleep. That wasn't, even, that wasn't even a full minute, but it means that you got to wait, beloved. And trust that while you wait, even though you're not doing something, God is. It says that hope, secondly, is perseverance in our suffering. Because suffering brings hope. I don't know about you, but I don't like to suffer. I don't go looking for it, I don't hunt for it, but somehow it shows up at my doorstep every now and then. And when the scripture says, and I always hate that scripture, but I read it anyway, it says, trials develop endurance and they teach us to trust God despite the sufferings because not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings knowing that our suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character. Character produces hope, and it does not disappoint. When Peter was talking about that they should have faith like a refiner's fire, how many of you love gold? You like to wear it, you like to own it, you like to possess it. Do you know what it went through to be around your neck and around your earrings and around your waist, your wrist, or even like me, on your ankle? Do you know? that it goes through the hottest, most intense fire so that it will burn off all impurities. Mm -hmm. yeah. And even though we don't like suffering sometimes and we wish the Lord will show us another way to get that which we hope for, just sometimes, just sometimes you gotta suffer a little while. Yes. Mm -hmm. And somehow in the midst, the Lord supernaturally naturally works off and burns off all that you don't need mm -hmm. for your next season. So for those that are suffering, I pray for God's comforting mercies to surround you in this time. I want to pray that God undergirds you and gives you the strength that you need that you won't lose your hope because COVID and so many other things probably caused many of us to wonder whether or not it was worth hoping for anyway. But the truth of the matter is, as long as Jesus doesn't come back, there's so much to hope for and believe. It says hope brings joy and peace. Hope produces a joy in your soul. And even when everything doesn't work out the way you think it should or you hoped it will, it works out how God wants it, it still is good. And as long as Jesus is the hope of your righteousness and brings joy, know that the joy of the Lord will be your strength and that your hope will not be denied. Lastly, it says that the center of our hope is because Christ is alive. Amen. Because he's alive. Because he lives in our soul. Because he lives, he shows us the way. Because he lives, he promises that every tomorrow will be ours. And so the blessings of this hope is that you will live as he lives. And the truth is, without hope, no Christian, no soul can live. Beloved, I want us all to have unending expectations of hope. I want us to hope for all the things that are not yet to be. I can tell you a few of my hopes. My hope at first, until I had a chance to go to the funeral on Thursday, my original hope was that our church would be filled like it was on Easter. However, it switched on Thursday. 
when a bunch of people came to celebrate a soul that was not even Jesus Christ, but did his best to be a good man and to follow the Lord, and this room was packed into generationally multicultural, multi-faith. When I say there was no room to stand, people were standing along the walls and there was no seat. We were plucking up the ribbons so people could sit. I am praying for a church that wants to worship God like that. I am hoping that there will be an excitement in people's soul to follow this Jesus and not be mean and nasty, but allow the Lord to let love flow out of them so someone will know the love of Jesus. I am hoping and believing that the words that come out of my mouth and out of every mouth of a child of a believer would yield a hundredfold of life. And I'm believing that every disease will actually actually end. I am hoping for the things that Jesus promised, that love, joy, peace, and righteousness will be the way of the land. And I'm hoping that anytime anyone sees me, they see Jesus Christ. And they fall in love, not with me, but with the Jesus who created me. What are you hoping for? Those hopes I name, I expect to see before I depart this earth. In fact, many of those things I expect to see before 2023 is over. I expect the Lord to do amazing things, not only the next 50 days, but every day after that. Because by the power and the grace and the spirit of the risen Christ, it is possible if you have your right unending expectation and hope in him. And his name is Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rev, for that awesome sermon. Your unending expectation. Is your unending, long lasting, or continuous? Gracious and loving God, because you live, because you didn't just stay in the grave, but you chose to rise. Not because you were tired of a hard stone, but you rose because you love us so. This morning, as we heard the word, we heard your question of what are we expecting from you? What do we expect from a risen savior? Lord, truth be told, some of us don't even know anymore. Or perhaps we've just gotten so complacent and comfortable in our salvation that we stop expecting you to do miracles. Perhaps, God, we just accept things the way they are and we don't expect them to ever change because perhaps, God, we forgot that you can change all situations. So this morning, God, we invite you to come into our hearts and our minds and our souls and renew expectation in you. We invite you, Lord, now to come in and speak to the things that we perhaps have given up on and we just figured it's never going to be any different, God. We ask that you give us the expectation that you will change it and you will turn it around. God, give us the expectation of the joy of our salvation. And God, give us that expectation that will cause us to go out and share the good news that Christ has risen. 
And that means that God is a promise keeping God. So on this Sunday, may we rise in the full expectation of your glory, your grace, and your mercy. And we thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord. That in spite of ourselves, you are still the God of hope and expectation. It's in the matchless name of Jesus that the people of God simply say, amen, amen. and thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Amen, everyone. So now let us rise and sing our closing hymn, Victory in Jesus, because everything we expect from the Lord that is a gift that he promised can come true. And if you're here last Sunday, you're going to know that the victory in Jesus you're going to hear is not the one you're used to. So just get ready. Same words, different. <laughs>
the Lord. And as you, oh, Sister Angie, ask for a special announcement. Go. Okay, God bless you all. Just an update on the fundraising that I did um, last week. I just thank the people who participate who have bought a bun and cheese. It is for a good cause. I have a second fundraising coming, but you'll hear about it at the end of the year. And I want to know whatever bun left will be donated for fellowship. Thank you for participating. Thank you for everyone that bought a bun and cheese. God bless you all. I also forgot to share one other announcement. For those that are in sanctuary, when you go into the fellowship hall, there's a card for Bishop Bickerton who loved us. Go praising and blessing him in Jesus' name. Amen. Go. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our God as Brother Tamoya blesses us one more time. you as you go. Have an awesome Sunday and a beautiful blessed week. Amen. Virtual Church, see